So I want to talk about what's happening um, in sexuality in college among heterosexuals. I want to give a, a descriptive portrait of what's happening these days in the what I call the hooking up culture and also what's happening with uh, relationships um, and show how patterns are still gendered. So let me tell you what data I'm basing this on. First of all, I've been collecting some qualitative data at Stanford University where I teach interviews of undergrads by undergrads, and I've also been doing focus groups in a class I teach on sex and love. And then I'm using quantitative data from an online survey of undergraduates. I now have about 18 public and private universities that the data are coming from, so I have a pretty big sample. And today I'll limit things to heterosexuals. So in the online survey, I ask what is sexually happening on what students call hookups. So this graph is telling you men's and women's reports of what they did on the most recent hookup. So what you see here is that, you know, if you wonder, does hookup always imply they had sexual intercourse? No. Somewhere about 30, 40 percent of hookups involve intercourse. A quarter to a third only involve sort of making out and some touching and nothing genital. And then you have these categories in between. I'll intersperse qualitative data throughout. All that happened was kissing and fully clothed action. I hooked up with them again. There was more sexual stuff, but not sex. So it's clear that when students use the term sex, they usually mean intercourse. Now, some people have argued, and in fact, students will themselves often say this, that, well, now there's all this hooking up and people don't date anymore. So first of all, there's this term, dating. When students say that, they're talking about already being in a girlfriend-boyfriend relationship, okay? It's the prearranged date, you know, like John calls Mary on Wednesday and says, do you want to go to a movie on Saturday or something? Do you want to go to dinner tomorrow night? That's what is much rarer than decades ago. And when students say, we don't date here, that's what they mean. These don't exist at all. Once I got into this research for a while, I realized, well, the really interesting question here is, how do they get to relationships? So here's what I think is going on. First, most hookups don't lead to a relationship, but many relationships came from a hookup. And then sometimes dates are coming in between the first one to end hookups and when it gets sort of defined as a relationship. Students talk about the talk. Sometimes they even call it a DTR, the define the relationship talk. And relationships become official, this is their term, or exclusive, implying relationships kind of imply monogamy, via a talk to define more clearly what's going on here. And this talk may come after a few hookups, a few dates, something like that. I want to talk about ways in which this whole scene that I've kind of been describing is gendered. So I ask people about this most recent hookup. Did you have an orgasm? Do you think your partner had one? So if you just take all hookups, irrespective of what they did, 44% of men and 19% of women had an orgasm. Folks, this is worse than the sex gap in pay um, in terms of proportions, you know. Let's talk about orgasm rate in different contexts. So a first hookups it's 11 versus 31. That's where, for, by first, I don't mean your first ever, I mean your first with this partner. If it's the second or third with this partner, 16 for the women, 43 for the guy. If it's the fourth or higher with this guy, this person, 33 for the women, 64 for the men. If it's a relationship of at least six months, 68% for the women, 85% for the men. So relationships are much better for women in terms of orgasm, but they're much better for men too. All right, enough about orgasm and pleasure. Let's go on to who initiated spending time with this person the evening of the hookup. Then we asked who initiated the sexual activity in the hookup. Especially for sexual activity, men are initiating a lot more than women. By either men or women's report, men are initiating much more, both the starting to talk and initiating the sexual activity. So another way that the culture of hooking up is gendered is the double standard. So when I talk in focus groups, students say women who hook up with too many people or go too far in the first hookup are seen as sluts. And the term slut is 
used a lot, and other terms like ho, etc. Men can be seen as a man whore, and sometimes that's pejorative, but also male peer groups, you know, encourage and sort of give high fives for action. So it's really clear that, you know, reputationally, women are being judged by a different standard as men. So my short conclusion. So we have this new social form, or relatively new, I don't know exactly when it started, um, in that something sexual precedes rather than follows dates or other expression of relational intent. But the gendering of this, it's new, but this new social form, the gendering of it seems quite as extreme as the gendering of the old dating and courtship forms. I mean, that would be the broad brush conclusion, lots of other things one could want to make conclusions about. And I think... I've been interested in, should we think this thing is good for women or bad for women? And it's always compared to what? You know, compared to the old system, I think it's unclear. In some ways, women are empowered. In some ways, maybe they're exploited more. (laughs) 